Hello students, uh, so now I'm going to go about over how to do this um, RSA and uh, for this as you know the basics are to understand about the multiplicative inverse and this extended Euclid's algorithm as well as the um, modular exponentiation. Uh, so we'll start with um, this modular exponentiation. Uh, so to compute say uh, phi rise to 41 mod 9 if you want to do a kind of brute force approach or straightforward approach you would have to do repeated multiplications right so if I want to compute say uh, 5 rise to 4 I have to do 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 which is a large number and you do 3 multiplications. So in general if you have uh, if you have to compute say anything rise to n you have to do uh, n minus 1 multiplications. So um, and actually we are in interested here only in the mod value so fire you are not directly interested in this case for example in phi rise to 41 we are actually interested in phi rise to 41 mod 9 okay so we don't need to really work with such big numbers so that's the motivation for this uh, problem okay so the first step is to write this phi rise to 41 actually this 41 the exponent in binary so this is what it is in binary so uh, we get uh, uh, you write the exponents of 2 1 2 4 8 16 32 then you get it to be um, this so you start with 41 so 41 uh, can uh, is less as uh, can fit within 32 so or kind of you can put 32 inside 41 so mm, you get a 1 over here so the remaining is 9 so you cannot put 16 with 9 so this is 0 then 8 is less than 9 so you can put a 1 then you have uh, 9 minus 8 is 1 which is left so these two have to be 0 and this is 1 okay so basically you are converting from decimal to binary so once you get this uh, what you will have to do is keep computing the exponents phi rise to 1, phi square, phi to the power 4, phi to the 8, phi to the 16, phi to the 32 and so on. Okay, So phi to the 1 mod 9 is 5 uh, uh, mod 9 which is 5 and phi square mod 9 is phi to the 1 times phi to the 1 mod 9 so phi to the 1 is 5 so you're taking the mod 9 inside so this can be written as phi rise to 1 mod 9 times phi rise to 1 mod 9 so which is 5 mod 9 times 5 mod 9 which is 5 phi times phi 25 mod 9 which is 25 mod 9 is 7 okay so uh, i hope everyone knows how to compute the um, uh, reminder so when I divide 25 divided by 9 I get something like this so take out the quotient which is 2 and uh, multiply by the divisor which is 9 and that's the reminder which is 7 okay uh, then phi rise to 4 mod 9 is phi square times phi square mod 9 so I take the mod 9 inside so it is phi square mod 9 times phi square mod 9 phi square mod 9 is 7 so 7 times 7 mod 9 which is 49 mod 9 so again 49 divided by 9 is this take out the reminder which is this times um, so take out the quotient which is this what's the fractional part multiply this by 9 uh, the device that you get for the reminder okay so keep doing this until you hit the largest exponent you have here so phi rise to 32 okay so now you want to compute phi rise to 41 which according to this is phi rise to 32 times phi rise to 8 times phi rise to 1 mod 9 so this is 7 uh, phi rise to 32 is 7 and then phi rise to 8 mod 9 is 7 and phi rise to 1 mod 9 is 5 so 7 times 7 times 5 mod 9 so 7 times you again no need to multiply right away the whole thing so you can go step by step so 7 times 7 is 49 49 mod 9 is uh, going to be 4 
multiply now that with 5 so 4 times 5 is 20 20 mod 9 is going to be 2 okay so if you count the number of multiplications we do here 1 2 3 4 5 multiplications plus 2 more multiplications uh, so leading to 7 multiplications totally okay so this is one part of uh, thing uh, you need to know this to do RSA okay uh, the second thing is to do with a multiplicative inverse okay uh, with multiplicative inverse what we mean is so for example if I want to find the multiplicative inverse of 7 in the class module of 15 what it literally means is which integer from 0 to 14 you know when I talk about multiplicative inverse it is um, um, when I talk about multiplicative inverse it is it means which integer I multiply with 7 from the class modulo 15 means 0 to 14 such that the product again modulo 15 is equal to 1 okay so you, you can do a brute force approach again of multiplying 7 with each of them and uh, take the uh, do the modulo of 15 the division and say for example 7 times 2 is 14 14 modulo of 15 is still 14 7 times 3 is um, uh, 21 21 mod 15 is 6 7 times 4 is 28 28 mod 15 is 13 and so on so only for one integer which is 13 7 times 13 is 91 91 mod 15 is 1 you get the product to be 1 okay so we say 13 is a multiplicative inverse of 7 in the class modulo 15 and vice versa which means like 7 is the multiplicative inverse of 13 in the class modulo 15 okay now similarly when you want to find the multiplicative inverse of 9 in the class modulo 13 you could do a brute force approach of just writing out all the integers in the class modulo 13 which is from 0 to 12 and then keep multiplying um, this 9 with each of them so 9 times 0 is 0, 0 mod 13 is 0, 9 times 1 is 9, 9 mod 13 is 9, 9 times 2 is 18, 18 mod 13 is 5 9 times 3 is 27, 27 mod 13 is 1, and so on. Okay, so only in one situation you get uh, the product to be 1. So in this case, we say 3 is the multiplicative inverse of 9 in the class model of 13. Now, uh, the issue is we don't want to do this for any large integer, right? Uh, I remember in the context of RSA, we'll be working with very large integers. So that's why we need to be able to have an efficient algorithm, which in this case is called the extended Euclid's algorithm, to be able to uh, do this or uh, compute this multiplicative inverse. Okay, so uh, now let's go ahead and see the extended Euclid's algorithm. And for that, we need to understand about GCD a little bit, and then we'll come back to that. So, what do you mean by GCD? GCD means greatest common divisor when uh, you divide two integers, which is a, a largest integer that can divide both integers, right? So GCD of m comma n. Now in this case, m and n are unique. Uh, that's what we are mostly interested at. If m and n are the same, the GCD is also the same integer, right? So we say given two integers, m and n in general say m greater than n. So when the two integers are not the same, one has to be greater than the other. So let's say m is greater than n, then we say GCD of m comma n is GCD of n comma. So n is getting over here, uh, and n comma m mod n. Okay. So you see the magnitude of the values that you are working with keeps on reducing, and until you hit a zero, so GCD of k comma zero is going to be k. Okay. So GCD of 120 comma 45 is GCD of 45 comma 120 mod 45 which is 30 and GCD of 45 comma 30 is GCD of 30 comma 45 mod 30 which is 15 and GCD of 30 comma 15 is GCD of 15 comma 30 mod 15 which is 0 and GCD of 15 comma 0 is 15 okay so anything can divide 0 and the remainder is still 0 so it's only like when you have 0 as one of the two integers and the other integers in this case say 15 the gcd is going to be 15 itself okay 
So now let's say GCD of 53 comma 30, you have GCD of 30 comma the remainder and 53 is divided by 30 which is 23 and then which is GCD of 23 gets here and 30 mod 23 which is 7 and GCD of 23 comma 7 is 7 and GCD of um, uh, the mod 23 mod 7 is 2 and GCD of uh, 7 comma 2 is GCD of 2 comma 7 mod 2 is 7 mod 2 is 1 and then this is GCD of 1 comma 2 mod 1 2 mod 1 is 0 so GCD of 1 comma 0 is 1 so when you get the GCD of 2 integers to be 1 uh, we say the two integers are relatively prime okay so uh, we are interested uh, in working with integers which are relatively prime when we do this uh, RSA okay all right so now when two integers are relatively prime uh, uh, actually before that uh, for any two integers m and n we can write m times x plus n times y is gcd of m comma n but what we are interested is actually when the gcd is one between the two integers so when m times x plus n times y is equal to one okay so we can really find such x and y okay using this extended euclid's algorithm and um, what it is is this x is said to be the multiplicative inverse of m the one that you are multiplying it with so x is the multiplicative inverse of m in the class modulo the other integer which is n okay similarly y is the multiplicative inverse of n the integer you are multiplying y with in the class modulo m Okay, so x is the multiplicative inverse of m in the class modulo n. Similarly, y is the multiplicative inverse of n in the class modulo m. Okay. So let's go through now an example for extended Euclid's algorithm. So um, normally you will encounter situations like this, finding the multiplicative inverse of one integer uh, with the other integer. As I said, uh, the motivation for an algorithm is to, we don't want to go through this brute force approach of finding the multiplicative inverse. We want a more efficient algorithm and that's what is this extended Euclid's algorithm. Okay. Now, the one prerequisite, right, we want, we want to find the multiplicative inverse using this algorithm, we want to make sure that the two um, uh, integers that you're working with are relatively prime. So you want to make sure 30 and 53 are relatively prime and we know that they're relatively prime we just saw that the gcd of 53 comma 30 is 1 okay so first make sure that is true okay so now write down the equation so we know that we can write it as what mx plus ny is 1 where m is uh, the greater of the two integers so pick up the greater one among them so in this case 53 so we can say 53x which is mx plus ny so n is now your 30 30y is 1 so our goal is to find the x and y okay now uh, actually we are interested in the value of y because we want to find the multiplicative inverse of 30 so whatever 30 is multiplied with in this case y so we are really interested in the value of y but as we run through the algorithm we will get values for both x and y okay so the way you start the uh, process is you set up a table like this and uh, these are the four columns and uh, you have say um, uh, these are the kind of the reminders you'll work with but to start uh, m is 53 n is 30 the quotient is nothing in the first row and then this is just an initial setup x is 1 y is 0 and then uh, again you have 0 and 1 so you're going to update the values of x and y if for each iteration and eventually whatever we end up with uh, um, at the last uh, will be the values for x and y. So in every iteration what we'll be doing is we'll be filling up uh, this cell first okay uh, this cell let me try to make it big um, yeah we'll be filling up this and this and this and this so this is what we'll do in each iteration we'll fill up first this quotient and the reminder and then x and y okay so let's go through uh, 
the steps so in the first iteration what we'll do is we'll find the quotient when 53 is divided by 30 the quotient is 1 and the remainder is 23 that's what it is so in this term is going to be uh, the quotient that we got here the two greens we are multiplying so this quotient times 0 1 times 0 is 1 subtracted from the x value two rows above this so this is 1 so 1 minus 1 times 0 okay so 1 minus 1 times 0 is going to be um, 1 that's what I have here then you have to find this this is again this two things this quotient and this immediate top value of y which is 1 so 1 times 1 subtracted from 0 so 0 minus 1 times 1 is going to be negative 1 okay so that's how you get uh, those two x and y values. Let me remove this. Okay. Now let's go to the next iteration. The next iteration you have this table now. So 30 is now your m actually and 23 is your n. So 30 divided by 23 the quotient is again 1 and the remainder is 7. 30 divided by 23 the remainder is 7. So now this x value is again going to be from 0 you're going to subtract the two greens uh, here are uh, this right so this one and one of the two greens are uh, the x, uh, immediate top x and then the quotient so the one times one is going to be uh, one so zero subtract uh, subtract one times one is negative one so now this is going to be one this one minus this one minus one times negative one so that's one times negative one so that's going to be one plus one which is going to be two so that's what we have here okay so now keep going so this is when you have 23 divided by 7 the uh, quotient is what 3 and the remainder is 2 so the quotient is 3 and the remainder is 2 and this is what we want to compute so this is now this one subtract this uh, so that's going to be uh, let's see one minus three times negative one so that's going to be one minus minus three so that's going to be four okay and then this cell is going to be negative 1 minus 3 times 2 so that's going to be negative 1 minus 6 is going to be negative 7 okay so now you have to work with this table so that's this here so let me there okay so 7 divided by 2 the quotient is 3 and the remainder is 1 so then you have this cell so negative 1 the immediate two cells above it and minus the two green numbers here are 3 and 4 so 3 times 4 so because the green how you get them the immediate top and the quotient similarly the immediate top for y and the quotient okay and then subtract from two cells above the x or y so negative 1 minus 12 which is negative 13 and in this case it's going to be this 3 times negative 7 subtracted from 2 so it's going to be So 2 minus this 3 times negative 7. So it is 2 minus negative 21. It's going to be 23. Right? So that's why we got it. So let me remove all of this. Okay. Alright. So now you have this. So 2 
and 1, right? So when you divide 2 by 1, the quotient is 2 and the remainder is 0. So once you get a reminder as 0, you could stop, okay? Uh, and the values of x and y are your final values, that, that's what you have. So we say here this negative 13, uh, it, so x is associated with m, right, which is 53. So negative 30, 13 times 53 plus uh, n, which is 30, times this 23. Okay, so these are the final values of x and y. So is equal to, you can check, should be 1. Okay. Because you see 53 times 13 is 689 and 23 times 30 is going to be 690 when you subtract you should get 1. Okay. So we say what this 23 is the multiplicative inverse of 30 in the class model of 53. We are really interested in 23 but if you want to know what's the multiplicative of 50 inverse of 53 in the class model of 30 which is negative 13. So negative 13 is the multiplicative inverse of 53 class model of 30. And how do we get this 17? You see, when you work with negative numbers, if you want to get the positive equivalent of them in the particular class, right? So we are here, we are interested in the class modulo 30. So what you have to do is you have to add 50, negative 13, right, plus 30. So negative 13 plus 30 is going to be 17. So they are equivalent. Negative 13 and 17 are equivalent to each other in the class modulo 30. So uh, we can say 17 is the multiplicative inverse of 53 in the class model or 30. Okay, so when you work with negative integers, you want to get the positive equivalent in a particular class, model of some n, add uh, that n value. So in this case, as it's 30, negative 13 plus 30. If you have negative um, 43 or something, keep on adding 30 until you hit a positive value. Okay, all right, so we'll stop here.